fucking heck, we really are a bunch of kinky bastards, aren't we? Hello, my name's Artemis, and I've been thinking about the things that we like, but, you know, the more sensitive things that we all like. Everyone has something, some sort of interest that they like. Hell, we're not exempt from that, whether it's sexual or not. Everybody has something. Oh, yes, we all have our own little interests, but, I mean, we're, we're pretty subtle about ours. We don't really mention it too much, and, I mean... I wouldn't be surprised if nobody actually knew what they were. Oh yes, kings of subtlety, the both of us. But, you know, it does make me wonder, where exactly did some of these interests come from? And did, like, the TV shows, the movies, the books, the games that we used to watch, did they perhaps contribute to these interests in some way? Well, let's find out, shall we? Oi! It's my fucking line. The media that we watch as kids is pretty fundamental to our development and it has a lot of effects upon us. And now, while I wouldn't say that it is ever going to be as strong as potentially turning a kid gay so those Christian groups can fuck right off, it is still pretty important in helping us figure ourselves out and the things that we do like. We've all had character crushes, funny feelings and certain obsessions over scenes that just didn't quite make sense until later on in life. And some of us were able to embrace that and find things that we enjoyed a lot sooner, whereas some of us it took a little bit longer. But I definitely think it's fair to say that while no TV show can actually outright give you an interest, they can still help you discover that you potentially already had that interest. But what kind of examples could I give you? And how could they have possibly affected us as we grew up? Let's, Let's find out. My turn, asshole. Okay, right off the bat, I think it's worth delving into the world of anthro animals and cartoon cute critters that we're all exposed to. That is just flooding kids' TV. I've mentioned them all before. Here they go, just whizzing past. I can't be bothered saying them out loud again. And yeah, that, that's a whole big ass thing right there, a whole massive concept. Now, from a simple marketing perspective, it's pretty easy to understand why this was chosen and it's generally been adopted. I mean, bright colors and fuzzy cute shit, kids eat that up and so do obviously a lot of us adults. But you can also plaster that shit on basically anything under the sun, whether it's Happy Meals, lunch boxes, fucking anything, plasters for God's sake, and it will work. Cartoons have long been considered to be made for kids, and I mean that, uh, not in the way that the YouTube and FTC crowd seem to think that that fucking means, ass clowns that they are, but rather in that they are generally more appealing to youthful viewers. Now, it's never going to be that specific shows actually made you a furry. They don't have that sort of power, but they can help you find those things in life that you really do enjoy. Now, of course, I have actually made an entire video on things that have potentially made you a furry, and you can view that uh, little video, here's the thumbnail, uh, anywhere you like on this little channel at your leisure, but this is more just the cliff notes because it kind of relates a little bit to the point that I'm going to try to make. Segway. Now, to really make our points on the things that influenced us from a young age, we're going to have to draw back on some personal history and development in ourselves on a subject that is actually pretty close to us. So it might be a little bit more personal to us than it is to other people, but that's the way we're going with it. Now, I know I've mentioned in the past that we are all about the feet and the tickles because they are cute and cuddly and wholesome and lovely, and it's just what we are geared to like. And obviously, we can think back on a whole myriad of media opportunities, things like fucking TV shows, movies and games that are actually kind of full of that kind of stuff. Obviously, we could go through hundreds of clips and figure out exactly how every single one of them relates to specific kinks and interests and fetishes that we see the world over. But that would take months, first of all, because there's a lot of them. And also, considering we don't actually share them, it's going to be quite difficult for us to relate to them and try and get our points across and explain them. So we're probably going to need to find something a bit closer to home. So yes, this is probably going to be a little bit more of a personal history, uh, self-discovery, and, you know, the usual dose of teenage awkwardness as well. Now, I didn't actually discover all of my likings for this sort of stuff until I was about 15, coming up 16. And while there was a lot of stuff to actually figure out during that part of my life, there was also quite the eye-opening moment where you realise that this stuff is everywhere and you've kind of been paying attention to it without really realising it. There's all of these themes of characters being barefoot and it's just a thing that's accepted imagery associated with feet you've got things such as tickling being used as a method of 
interrogation, interrogation and torture pretty consistently because it won't horrifically mentally scar the people watching and it's something we can all sort of relate to. You've even got like competitions based around tickling. I can remember this whole show that had a whole fucking segment dedicated to it and that shit obviously sticks in your head. And of course you do also have the pretty blatant fetish material that's out there. Now it does kind of make sense in a lot of ways. I mean, tickling is generally considered to be a childish thing. It's, it's, it's actually evolutionary. Uh, it is helping you to protect the vital parts of your body which could come under attack and potentially kill you. There you go. There's a reason as to why tickling exists as a fucking thing. Um, but like the threat of it and using it as a torment is pretty easily relatable because hell, we can all relate to how torturous it can be. And obviously feet are generally considered to be the most ticklish part of the body. So it kind of does make sense how the things sort of link together and how it's not just an aimed direct attack on trying to force people into liking this sort of thing. Now, when you start to learn a bit more about yourself, you start to realize that your brain has been slowly sort of saving and storing all of these scenes, all of these things, because it knows that they are important, but it can't quite figure out why. And you come back later on in life, having, you know, kind of had these revelations and you look back all of these scenes as I do as well and you see them almost as awakening moments where you're like oh shit maybe that was how I started to realise. These kind of things have always been in the shows and the media that we have kind of consumed. You can date it right the way back to the beginning of like TV all the way up to modern day. They're always sort of there because it's just one of those long running themes. In a way you can kind of start to see these things as little glimpses into the future that you will discover with these likings. They are like stones along the pathway that guide you to where you're going to actually be. And, you know, I do honestly credit a lot of this stuff as helping us make this big revelation that, you know, feet are fucking adorable. And of course, I'm not saying that these scenes, these shows, these themes ever forced an interest on me that I didn't already have. I mean, they don't have that sort of power. And if they did, I would probably be into some truly disturbing shit based on the stuff that we see as kids on TV. <laughs> Sweet Christ, do not invoke the name of Blobby. We are not ready for that shit again. We've already done it once. But what exactly is going on here? And how did this stuff have an effect on us and why? That's right, folks, it's segue time. Next segment, please. Okay, we've had the starters and the main course. It's time for the dessert, where we actually answer the question of the video, did TV shows make us kinky? The answer, uh, no, no, they did not. Okay, thank you very much. Plug the Patreon. Uh, bye, see you next week. Okay, obviously we're not just going to leave it there. We're going to actually give you a proper answer because it's quite an interesting thing to delve into. But in a word, no. Um, these things don't make us have these interests. Uh, sorry for the sort of bait and switch with the whole we're going to pose a question and it turns out you didn't need to anyway because it's an obvious answer. But... No, I don't think that any TV show has the power to actually instill an interest in you. It doesn't have the power to give you anything that you don't already have. I mean, humans are kinky bastards in general with a lot of sexual overtones to our general culture. Like, no amount of extra scenes in TV shows is going to steer us one way or the other. Being exposed to the fact that these things do actually exist is actually going to help you sort through and figure out whether this is something you're going to like or not. Imagine as a young child your brain operates pretty simply. You put something in and it deposits it into either a yes or a no pile. Yes, I like it. No, I don't like it. Now, you can watch a lot of TV show and a lot of stuff, and you'll put a lot of things into that little machine, and it will start to think, oh, do we like this? Mm, no, we don't. Oh, no, yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Uh, some things you are always going to hate. Some things you are always going to love. The TV shows are not going to be influencing that. All they're really doing is adding more to the pile that needs to get sorted out, helping you sort that pile out a little bit quicker and discover things that would have taken a bit longer for you to actually discover. All of these things that we love, whether they're just general interest, kinks, or even sexual fetishes, are things that we are born with. They're not something that you can change. It's not something that you can influence. Um, I would liken it to the whole argument of turning someone gay in the sense of it's not possible. It's something that's already in the person. It's something that they were born with that is just part of their being. And no amount of scenes or inclusion in TV shows or themes is going to influence anybody one way or the other. It's only going to help them discover what was already there. Exactly. Now, you can't influence whether someone or not is actually going to have this interest, but you sure as shit can help them to discover it. And sometimes it's passive with things like, oh, okay, 
that character's barefoot. Well, that's in my head, but a lot of people are going to forget it. Sometimes it's not so passive with some of the quite clearly targeted shit, which is out there. But I do think that when we start to make these big revelations about ourselves and we start to realize these things, it's very easy to take a look back at all the shit that we used to look at, all the shit we used to enjoy, and start to figure out, oh, okay, maybe that was like the first moment I started to realize. Maybe that's what helped me get to this big point of discovery. It's actually pretty important and pretty damn good that we have such diverse themes in media and all the things that we watch as we're growing up. That level of normalization really does help people discover and accept them themselves when they turn out to have interests that perhaps might not be as generally accepted by society and just a little bit more niche. Precisely, finding these things in TV shows, books, games, the lot is actually really, really important to our fundamental development. It helps us get to where we need to be in life and discover more about ourselves that will allow us to feel more joy. It is a good thing. It is the exposure. Now, sometimes the exposure can be a little bit nasty. I remember having a fucking phobia of Leatherface because I saw horror movies a little bit too early, but hell, it did make me figure out that that film's going to be shit, and when I watched it, God, it's a fucking shit film. But ultimately, no. No, these shows don't make us kinky. They don't force it upon us. They don't instill some deep love for something that we were never going to love. They instead manage to find it deep down, buried inside. Our brains start to figure things out. They start to process, and they help us get to that point. And honestly, I think it's fucking valuable shit that we get to be exposed to such diversity in our media and help us find those little slices of happiness just a bit quicker. Okay, video done. We answered the question, I think. We gave away some more personal information because fuck it, apparently that's what we're doing these days. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe if you did, you would like to... <laughs> Plug the Patreon and maybe go and become one because, you know, I could always do with some more support. I mean, the support I get is fantastic, but hell, it's like tea. I love tea. It's great. It's wonderful. I have some great tea, but I could always do with more. So, you know, it's there if you want it. Um, but, but yeah, aside from this shameless plug, that's, that's about all we have time for. Thank Why? You. What have you got to do that's so fucking important? Um, more shameless plugging, really, and maybe some poor pictures. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. The most important part of your fucking day. Begging.